Hi, I'm Ruthie Dale and welcome to my channel and welcome back to How To Fridays. This week, I want to be talking about how to use Snappa.com. And if you want to know more, then keep on watching. I've been using Snappa for a few months at least and I'm going to show you how I make my YouTube thumbnails using Snappa. Now, there are many different things you can do on Snappa, but today specifically, I'm going to show you how to make a thumbnail for your YouTube channel if that's what you're interested in. Now, if you want me to cover more things on Snappa, I am happy to do so. Just leave me a comment down below and I will make a video for you. I am making this video without screen recording my screen on computer because not everybody is into technology the same way at the same level so i am going to be using a video camera recording my screen that way so that i can use my fingers and my hand to point more at the screen as in a way as if i'm there talking with you and explaining it to you in real life as much as i can possibly make that happen well i am going to be showing you three different ways on how to make a very easy thumbnail nothing too dramatic nothing too extra if you want to do that i will show you different options of templates that you can choose from but this is basically what i do to make it simple make it easy because not everybody like i said is into technology the same way and they don't have the same level and this is the easiest thing i can find to do on snappa so when you first get into the page and it's called snappa.com s-n-a-p-p-a dot c-o-m so that is the name of the page this is the first page that you get on before you log in and so you you can get started for free by clicking up here in the corner and you have to put in your name your email address and the password that is a minimum of four characters and then you can get started for free i already have an account so i'm not going to do this part i'm just going to log in now that i am logged in this is the first place that i see when i log in and so you can upgrade the page if you want upgrade you can upgrade to a premium snappa if you want to I Okay, so according to the internet, the upgrade cost starts at $10 a month. Usually in the beginning, you can get a pop-up on the screen that says that you sh need to upgrade or something like that. You get free a uh, seven day free trial or something like that. And at first glance, it looks like you need to upgrade to use Snappa. You don't actually have to do that. Uh, it's just something that is a trial per, uh, period that you can try but usually it's an X in one of the corners whether it's in this corner or in that corner of the screen I don't know because uh, I haven't had it up for a while but they usually do pop up uh, in the beginning to see if you want to upgrade now if you want to do more with Snappa I do definitely recommend upgrading and definitely upgrade if you need to save more than three thumbnails or projects a month because i think it's if you don't have the upgraded version three saves is what you get or it's three downloads is what you get per month that being said i will do what i a youtube thumbnail so when i go down i scroll down on the page I go down and I see all of the top social media posts that you can do. A Facebook post, a YouTube link, a Instagram post, an Instagram story, LinkedIn post, Pinterest pin or Twitter post or the one I'm going to be using which is right here which is the YouTube thumbnail. When I click on that, it will get me to a new page. And here I can see a list of different tem templates. They are not set this way. These are templates that you can use and you can adjust them to be according to your topic and what you want your YouTube to be like. I like to go down because the one I want and the one I use is pretty far down every time. So let's see. I like to use this one right here just because it is very simple. It has a pink background with uh, just some letter on it. And I can obviously add things in later if that's what I want to. But I like to start off with a pretty simple base. So that's the one I'm choosing. And then I click on it and it will open a new page. So I like to just center it in the screen. But usually up here where it says untitled design, you click on the pen next to it. It's right up here. If you can see, click on it and you name it YouTube thumbnail or whatever you want to call it i'm just going to call it this for this specific video now up here in this corner right here you can see my uh, cursor is moving this and there's an arrow pointing out uh, up i mean 
and this is where you pick your background you can choose from photos that are already in the system and you can search through images like if i want flowers it will give me flowers as you can see you can search for what you want you can also use patterns uh, that are already in here you can also use your uploads these are my previous thumbnails which is why i'm not afraid to show them these are what i've used or thought about using you can also use color all of these are options up here in this color and i just this one happens to have a color here right now and if i want to change the color i want to keep a simple background i just click this little one and i can choose between this or i can make a custom color now custom color i can do basically whatever or whatever here going up and down to see if i want like a blue one but i want to make it more bright and this blue color i can definitely do that i don't want to ch change the color specifically so i'm just going to exit this and keep it as is because what i'm going to do is go through my uploads and to upload a uh, photo you can click on this button right here the blue big button right there for my makeup videos i usually choose a photo of myself and i click on the image and it gets to the background one thing you cannot drag and drop you cannot drag and drop you have to click on the actual image to get it so if i want to do this one i have to click on the image to change and then usually what i like to do is that for my makeup videos i like to just leave it like this i don't do anything more i just have a picture of the makeup look that i'm showing i don't have any text because the video has a name on it and that's enough for me if you want to get back to what you did like you accidentally deleted something up right here you have an undo button and i also have a redo button which means i can delete it again or redo what i just did but let's say i want a text now up here in the corner you can pick um, the font that you want you can pick if you want it bold uh, italic or with the line underneath it the size is right here in this corner and then you can see if you want it to the side to centered or to the right side i guess for me i think this is right side you can change the color to whatever color you want i think for me i'm just gonna keep it white because that's what fits with my theme i usually just go for something called prata that's the font that i use and so i just click on my keyboard the name the letter p to get to the, this quicker you can use your keyboard to get to something quicker so if i open the fonts and i click on p it will give me all of the p's from the beginning and i just scroll down to the one i want you can go through this list and see what font you want to begin with and kind of find the one that you prefer personally if if you have a youtube channel and i do suggest you have the same font every time for the video that you have meaning that if you have different types of videos you can have different fonts for different types of the videos but i do suggest keeping it uh, cohesive throughout your youtube channel if you want you can do something that is seasonal as well meaning having something that looks more fun and spring like in the spring or, or in the summer and you can have something that is completely like taupe that is so christmas in christmas if that's what you want but i then have the white color right here if i go down here it's another box that is black and it just shows sh a shadow if i want to add shadow to mine i will if i want to mark the whole text i just double click on it like with my cursor double click to mark it if i want to add shadow this one is seven this one is four and i do this i have a shadow on my text now i don't like a shadow on my text i'm quite simple i really am simple i'm young but i'm old so i can write let's say okay let's say eyeliner makeup look just because i have eyeliner on so i'm just gonna keep it like that now you may think that this looks awkward and weird well first of all you can let me click on the side so i can move this around you can drag this out to the side so that it has more space in one line because that looks better you can also center it i don't know if the camera picks it up but there's a line going through right here that tells me that it's on the center i need to lower it so that it will be on there it's completely in the center because it has a line going 
vertically and well vertically and horizontally that's where the line goes now that's when i know when it's centered if i ever want something that is centered i prefer for this i will keep it down here so that it's out of my face and you can see the makeup look as well as the text but like i said i don't like to have a text on this type of thumbnail i just have a picture of myself now for the other type of thumbnail i like to have just the pink backgrounds if i want to save a color that i want to use for all of my backgrounds i go through the color up here in the corner i open it up and i go through the saved and it says edit right here and then i can add whatever color that i want let's say the bright red i go uh, exit that so that it's chosen it's right here and then I just save the colors. And then when I open this again, you can see the red is right here. If I want the color background that I've chosen right here, I have to delete this one right here. And I can't just delete it by undoing something. It's there, it's stuck. Then I move up into this corner right here and above the photos, patterns, uploads, and color, there is a remove button. I click that one and it's gone. It is exactly the color of the background that I want for this one. I want to go back to my standard font and my standard color, which is white because white and pink looks good. Yes, I am a girly girl. And so for my mental health Thursday videos, I usually have just this background with a title. So let's do the title for yesterday, which is something like this. And I like to emphasize certain words, words. I like to emphasize certain words. And as I like to do is keep everything on the same line. If I want to center this text, I centered the actual, I double clicked on it and I centered the text first in the box. And then I centered the box after to make sure that everything is exactly in the middle. If not, it might not reg register the fact that you want it in the middle. So that's usually how I like to have my mental health Thursday videos. That's simple, just a font with the colored background. And that is something you can do with yours. Now for my more complicated version of this, I like to have a background and I like to have a photo and I usually have a photo like this one this is from last week and I just again clicked on the photo and I like to add a shape now you can add graphics and if that's what you want icons vectors photos and uploads if you want to add graphics now I don't really care for graphics that's not my style but you definitely have the options to do that because you have background effects text and shapes in the effects section you can see whether how to change the color of basically with the hue saturation brightness and contrast so it's basically the intensity of the background that you have chosen and so i like to choose shapes for mine now i don't like a complete square that's not who i am sometimes i do like a square but for this i like a softer look so i will go for this one and i just click on it to make it appear on screen and you can see how it's in the in front of the um, text and that's not what we want we don't want a square in front just a black blob of a square so i click on the square and i move it backwards by clicking on this up here up here you can click on something that says either duplicate that layer which means make two of them if i do that i have two if you can see right here well i don't want two so i'm gonna delete that but i click on the layer and they're right up here you can see that it says move layer back or move layer forward now for this you can't exactly move the layer forward because it's at the top layer another thing you can click on up here is delete the layer which means if i click on that it deletes that shape now i want the shape so i want to move it back which is why i click on this one but i also don't like it in the center uh, i move it off to the side and then I change the color to my saved color, which is the color that I use for my mental health background. It's the same color. And I pick that one and I just move it up where I want it. Usually it's about here. I don't have anything precise that I like and I like to drag it out, make it bigger than I need so that whenever I do put the text in, I can have the freedom to write what I need to write. This one is a very long one, which is why I chose it. So I want to make this smaller. I also want to make sure that this is spaced to the left side, to this 
side right here just because I like to keep things straight and neat you can have it centered if that's what you want uh, and then I just move it up into where I feel like it has enough space on either side of the box and then I click on the box the square that I have the background color I move it in so that it matches kind of this side with this side with how the letters are spaced from the corner so that it has about the same amount of space on every side of the box and then I just make this smaller as well by keeping it like this click on the side and this is how I have it up in this corner right here, you can see a save button, share button, and a download button. Now, I am done with this and then if I want to save it for later, I will then save it. That way, whenever I log into Snappa, I can find this specific one again. Now, if you want to save this, you need to download and you want to check any one of these i usually go for the web optimized jpeg because i am using it for the internet and i'm using it on the computer i'm not thinking about printing it or anything like that so i always choose the web optimized jpeg and usually just click on that one and it's downloading my image and it comes up here and it downloads uh, whenever it's downloaded, it's downloaded into your download file that you have on your computer. I guess that's all I have for you. So that is all I have for you today. And like I said before, if you want me to cover anything else, just leave a comment down below. So if you liked the video, then please leave a like and a comment down below. And if you want more content like this, then please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you will be notified when I upload a video. And I upload my how to Friday videos every Friday at seven o'clock Norwegian time, which makes it about two o'clock New York time. With that being said, I want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.